Hi guys, and I know you might be complaining from the previous lecture where I dropped the shallows here. I put two shallows and I did not explain. Well, I'm going to give you some explanation. It is not really hard. It's very easy. And I want you to have this concept. Remember very well that your experience is much more important than when you are learning. Because if you learn something and then you experience it and you do your own manipulation and so on, you will remember that for a long time and it will really grow your learning. Your creativity, your skills have to grow, not only your listening skills. This is not important. What I would like you to do is to try, to try things that I didn't talk about and drop them in, use the effects. And this is the only way for you to start learning and having confidence that you can be a very good motion graphics animator. So let's take the pop circle now and duplicate it and we call it uh, explain because I will delete it later. Well, I will double click on explain to open it and I will close the pop circle. Now I want to see the effects here. How do I do that? You remember, you can come to the effect here and double click on one of them and the effect controls will open. Now I have two drop shadows here. Let me delete drop shadow. I will delete this one, the one down. Come here and can say drop shadow and rename it in fact first. I could write any name and that's pretty practical. You notice how the name has changed. So if you have some special names you want to give, you can come here and change the name. Now let's open a bit and see the drop shadow is the yellow one here. I can change the opacity. You can see how the opacity is changing. These are properties that you can play with the way you like to your taste. You can change the direction and here it's rotating on the anchor point of the other circle, the one that you are dropping the shadow on. You notice how it's rotating on its anchor point, the one inside here, you can see it. Then there is the distance, same, same, it's based on the anchor point of the first layer. Here at zero, it becomes on bottom and you can just move it here. The softness gets a bit blurry if you want, a bit or too much blurry if you want. Softness is fine, you can play with it. I don't like softness, in fact, I, play, I prefer to play with opacity. Now there is a nice one here in this drop shadow, is the shallow only. So when you click on it, you don't see the original, you only see the shallow. Well, it gives you a different animation and things will disappear. If you deselect, you notice there is no more the originals, only the shallow only. This is very useful sometimes. We can come to the drop shadow and we can duplicate this one or put a new one. Let's take this one and duplicate. So now we have drop shadow first two. Okay, that's not a good name. Let's call it a second. Fine. Let's stop our animation here and see exactly what's happening. You have the original one with the thick one is the drop shadow first. You notice I'll put it on and off. The second one is the one that is coming over here. So this is quite cool because you can now change the parameters over here. Move this one on the side. Let's uh, move the angle. Here you are. So now you have four of them. So this drop shadow is dropping shadow for the white circle. Is also dropping a shadow for the second one. And the second one is doing the same. Pretty nice and pretty complicated to explain, but actually it's very easy. You come here and change the color. And let's make it gray. And here you are, you notice what's happening here. There is a shallow for the yellow, that's it, and the shallow for the white, and that's it, in the second shallow. Cool. That's all very nice. But I want to now to explore with you the radial shadow, and it's very interesting, this one. I want to get rid of the shadows here. I will just delete them. Simple as simple as this. I will take a radial shadow now and drop it in the FX control or drop it on the shape or drop it over here. You know how it works. I will drop it over here. Okay, now I have a radial shallow. What is radial shallow? Radial shallow has a color. Fine. It has an opacity. We'll reduce the opacity. Here you are. That's the opacity. Then it has a light source. The light source is over here. Of course, you need light to have a shadow, except in the other drop shadow, you don't need light. But now it tells us where is the light and it is very interesting. I want to press U here and then take all the keyframes to the beginning. So you can see them all at once and we get a better experience of what we are doing. Here you are and even this one, I will bring it over here. So they are all on. Now let's go back to our radial shadow. Now notice the source light here. If I click on the source light, 
if I move the source light, the shadows are moving. Now, this is amazing. And you can make an animation where the shadow starts from here and go around and you have your circle turning and so on, coming in the middle, whatever you want. You have a keyframing here. You notice the light source is keyframable and you can start keyframing it. For example, in the beginning, you keyframe the light source here, go to the end and make the light source. Of course, it's gonna go in straight line. I just put it here and here you are you have keyframed it and notice how the shadow is moving with the circles it's pretty fast this one so you have the source light i will remove the keyframe and take the source light and put it for example over here and about take it up a bit whatever you can take it outside the composition is okay here you are let's put it here so we can see it also you have the projection distance how far it's gonna go i will change the projection distance and notice what's happening so this is a real shadow now so the light is coming nearer your shape and give you a bigger shadow you notice when the number here is growing the light distance the projection distance is growing and it's projecting bigger it should be the contrary but that's okay you have the softness now you have here the render you can make it regular or glass edge i will show you glass edge i need to zoom in here i press alternate and just look what's gonna happen here if i go to glass edge meaning you know like the glass will give you a reflection it will also reflect the color of the circle within the shadow you can mainly grow it a bit if you notice you can grow it like this not much it's becoming harder or you can shrink it 100 percent if you change the color of the stroke uh, to let's say blue you will notice that the shadow here is changing i will cancel that so the glass effect will give the color of the shape itself inside the shadow if you like that you can have an influence you can also have shadow only so i will go back to 100 percent and you notice the radius shadow can give you maybe better shadows if you work on it and you set it up very nicely and meticulously and make sure that your distance protection is cool and uh, maybe you reduce the opacity a bit less okay you can increase the softness and here you are you can run it and you have a new one so this is about drop shadow and radial shadow i want to see them in your animations i want you to use them i want you to be proud nobody will ever notice this too they all work on the layer styles layer styles are like 100 billion years old drop shadow and radial drop shadow are the new one Thanks very much for listening. I hope you're satisfied about the perspective, drop shadow and radial shadow, and please use them. I'll see you in the next lecture.